So the first thing that you would do uh, in Salesforce is you would actually uh, add a mailbox, whether you want to add it from Gmail, um, Outlook, or you can add essentially any uh, email service provider by using IMAP and SMTP uh, functionality. Um, then um, once you've connected a mailbox, um, what you would do is you would fill out the first name, last name, and then you would um, also uh, fill out the signature, highly advise you to do that without any links whatsoever. And then you would just click on update and that's it, you're done. And then your email warm up uh, functionality will be um, active. Then the next step uh, that we do, which happens automatically, we also randomly assign mailboxes within the sequence. Um, so we do what's called inbox rotation. Um, and that also allows you to, to boost your um, email deliverability. The next section that you would do is you just simply upload the contacts. Um, so you just assign a tag to every single list and which will allow you to seamlessly manage your list within the sequence section. Uh, we would navigate then to the product section um, where we would assemble a product. So the reason why you need a product is because we would match um, essentially what is it that you sell, so what is it that you're offering with um, the uh, bias data. And that buy data is currently we're fetching that from uh, LinkedIn and we'll be also fetching uh, very soon also from the website um, uh, URLs and many other structured data sets. So the type of information that we would ask on the seller side um, is oh, what's the name of your product or service that you're um, selling, which industry is that you're in, uh, who's the ideal customer, uh, what's the pain that you're solving, the solution to that pain, and what is the cost of an action? So the cost of doing nothing about that pain or a problem. You can also do this in multiple different languages um, that you can fill it out, but you want to do it in French, uh, German, etc. Um, that allows you to essentially do localized uh, sequences um, as well. Then we navigate to the sequences section. Here you can see some of my um, essentially data, what sort of open rates we're seeing uh, or reply rates that we're seeing, but typically we would see 2x relative lift versus using um, templates. Um, so the way that you assemble a sequence, you just click um, new sequence, and then you would just name it test one, two, three. Uh, you select the product you want to sell. So you can have multiple products at the same part with different value props because you're targeting a different buyer persona. And then you would select the language. Um, and then you just click on next. Then the next step that you would do is uh, you would uh, literally uh, click on the filter. You would select the tag that you want to use. And then we would just select um, just Snoop Dogg as an example, because Snoop Dogg is also on LinkedIn. Um, uh, so let's just select Snoop Dogg. This is uh, his assumed email address, and that's his uh, LinkedIn uh, URL. So let's just click on Next, um, actually, which is here. Um, and um, it, it would ask us whether we would like to validate uh, the email address of Snoop. So let's just click on that. Um, it's super important that you do that um, so that your bounce rate is never uh, at over 5%. Um, if you're consistently at over 5% bounce rate, then Google and Microsoft use that essentially as a variable to uh, send you more so um, to spam. Uh, so you want to avoid that. You only want to send to recipients where it's a valid email address. So in this particular case, you can see it's red. It's actually uh, invalid. This is just because I assume it's uh, um, you know, the um, email address. Uh, of Snoop, but it's actually not. It's just something that I randomly have inserted. So just to give you an idea why it's important to do and validate at the point of you wanting to send an email to anyone out there. So this is a standard sequence builder. Um, so uh, our AI, AI capabilities exist in the initial email of the sequence. So we don't yet personalize the subject lines. It's actually, AI is actually not that great at subject lines yet. However, we believe it will change in the near future. So uh, typically speaking, you would just uh, um, have you know three to four words max as a subject line and I would um, advise you to um, essentially outline the pain that you solve for your recipient so that it uh, potentially resonates with them and it triggers them psychologically so if you have if they have that pain then they're more likely to open your email so that could be in our case you know low open rates low reply rates um, personalizing it actually a scale etc so when it comes to um, um, assembling a sequence you would just put hey first name and then the first type of uh, AI-based yeah, personalization is where we can include what's called the icebreaker. And just like the um, name implies, um, uh, it breaks the ice with the prospect, where it literally would scan the LinkedIn profile of your recipient and will fetch all the information, so the headline, the about section, the whole job history, and it'll make a sort of a one line or two line sort of observation or a compliment about that individual. And the use case here is that you want to have a full control of what goes into that initial um, email and you would just sign off with the sender full name and then the signature will follow from the mailbox section. In the follow-up steps, we don't yet use AI capability. So this is where you can still assemble your a sequence uh, further uh, by using templates. 
uh, which is totally fine. However, what one thing I would advise to do is using what's called spin tag. So spin tags allows you to randomize the content within the um, template. So you say hi, um, hey, and hello. So this allows you to uh, essentially randomly use a word for every single um, contact. Um, so by simply using curly brace, um, outlining the word, um, then using a vertical bar, and this is how the way it works. So you can also use that for uh, full sentences or even paragraphs as well. So it's super important that you do that in the initial first email. So I'm just going to uh, delete this for now. Um, I'm also going to delete this part and I will show you the full on AI personalization um, that's being uh, crafted by AI. So we would click on this toggle and then it asks us to set a fallback template. So this is important in case uh, AI fails and the reason the reason fails is because you forgot to include the LinkedIn URL for that contact. Then we would set the tone. We would um, also activate the overdrive mode, which is our advanced AI model, and we would just click on next. And then within the preview section, we will see an example of an email, just to recap of what it does. It looks at the product data of what is it that we're selling. It looks at the Snoop's LinkedIn profile, fetches all the information about him, and then it personalizes that unique email as the initial email of the sequence. And uh, so you can see here you, that this is a unique email that has been crafted to Snoop. Imagine you could do this at any scale and in any language. Um, so you can regenerate the copy if you want to do things manually. Um, you can click on the next contact if you had any. But in our case, uh, we would just click on auto generate all and imagine you had 10,000 contacts. And this is for us, uh, you know, really personalization at scale. So here you will set a schedule that you want to set. Um, you click on next. And um, here you would decide, you know, which mailboxes you want to use. Then you uh, can decide where you want to track the opens, whether you want to stop a multi-threading on reply. So meaning, you know, uh, it's super important that you do multi-threading in the world of um, selling, essentially reaching out to multiple recipients of the company. However, you may want the sequence to stop if one of the recipients from that domain replies back to you. And then you can decide whether you want to include the um, opt-out link or the opt-out text. Um, so links do damage your email deliverability. They're being included in the first initial email. Um, so hence, uh, you know, uh, we would advise typically to include a, a piece of opt-out text, which says, PS, if you don't want to hear back from us, just let, let us know. Um, uh, however, it's up to you, right? So we give you that uh, flexibility and then boom, you just launch the sequence and uh, then all the replies across all the mailboxes will land in a section, what's called the prime box. And, uh, here you can reply back to the prospect. You can click on, uh, sort of, uh, market as a positive. Uh, as negative, you can delete the whole trap thread, or you can add the person also to do, do not contact list, whether that's the email address or the uh, whole domain. And that um, data would sit in the settings section. And then the last but not least, you can also filter the whole um, uh, threads essentially by positive or negative. So typically, uh, me and the rest of the users would just look at positive replies. And that's about it.